Here we go. Thanks for joining me for this little ditty on the vessels of the thoracic limb. Fortunately, they're going to be very similar, at least proximally, to what we saw in the canine. So remember, we're going to start out here with the axillary artery. We're going to find a very small artery coursing towards the dorsal surface of the scapula as the suprascapular artery. Then we're going to have a very large branch coming off the subscapular artery. Just as in the dog, that subscapular artery is going to have two branches, the thoracodorsal, which courses caudally, and the caudal circumflex humoral, which is going to course laterally to the lateral surface. Okay, then we're going to have the cranial circumflex humoral come off just a little more distal. On occasion, it may come off the caudal circumflex humoral. Uh, when it does come off, it's going to course deep to the corticobrachialis muscle. Okay, once that comes off, we then continue as the brachial artery. Brachial is going to give off a couple branches into the triceps brachii muscle as the deep brachial. We have our collateral ulnar going out towards to the elbow, caudally. We may have one or more bicipital arteries, which are pretty easy to recognize as they go just right into the biceps brachii muscle. Okay, then transversing the cubit or the cranial portion of the elbow is the transverse cubital artery. We come down a little more distal, we see the common inner osseous. Just like in the dog, it'll course between the radius and the ulna. And once that one comes off, we continue as the median artery. Looking on that image to the right, we'll see that median artery is going to give off a radial artery. Notice that the radial goes more medial than the median. The median continues as the medial palmar after giving off a lateral palmar. The lateral palmar is very small. As you see here, it's going to join the collateral ulnar. You may see that on some of your specimens. Okay, we'll follow those down distally in a minute. Okay, so in this image, we can see the axillary artery here giving off the subscapular artery. It's two branches, remember, thoracodorsal going caudally and the caudal circumflex humoral going laterally. A little bit more distally here, we find the cranial circumflex humoral. As I said, it's going to dive deep to the corticobrachialis muscle that you see right there. Sometimes it's going to run parallel with the proximal muscular branch of the muscular cutaneous. So here we continue as the brachial at this point. Here we see a branch of the, a deep brachial branch coming off. Okay, I put this one up. This is just a little more distal, but I threw this up here because it shows two deep brachials coming off. We may also have two collateral ulnars come off. Just make sure they're supplying the same general area. You can call them the same thing. The collateral ulnar is a good landmark in the horse for a structure we don't see in our other species, which is the cubital lymph node. Before we leave this region here, let's look at the venous drainage. There's a cephalic vein coming from the lateral surface to the more cranial surface. And continuing down on the cranial surface of the antebrachium, and you see that it courses then medially. There's the median vein, which drains into the brachial vein. Between the brachial vein and the cephalic vein, we have the median cubital vein.
now often coming off proximal to the median cubital vein. We see the accessory cephalic, but in this case that accessory cephalic is coming off the cephalic vein just distal to the median cubital. Okay, that cephalic vein is coming up from the digit and the metacarpus as the medial palmar vein. Okay, we'll have medial palmar digitals on the digits and then it continues as the medial palmar vein. Okay, this image here, let's come back to the arteries. Remember we were following the brachial artery distally. The brachial artery then gives off our common interosseous artery and continues as the median artery. As the median artery gets more distal, just proximal to the carpus, we're going to see that the median artery then gives off a radial artery. Our main continuation here is the medial palmar. Generally around that same area that the radial came off, we see the lateral palmar. Sometimes that comes off proximal, sometimes more commonly I think distal to the radial. I've actually seen it coming off the radial. And we can positively identify that if we can follow it over in joining the collateral ulnar. So like this image here, once again, median coming down, giving off the radial, continuing as the medial palmar. Our lateral palmar is going to come over, we see here, joining the collateral ulnar. Okay, so the radial and the collateral ulnar and the lateral palmar are going to create a deep arch, as you see, just distal to the carpus. From that deep arch, we're going to find the palmar metacarpal arteries, which, just like the palmar metacarpal nerves, are going to be running just on the axial surface of the splint bones. So our medial palmar then, as it goes distally, is going to move more laterally and then divide into a lateral palmar digital and a medial palmar digital. So both of our palmar digital arteries are coming off our medial palmar artery. You can also see in this image, and you may be able to see on your specimen, that the palmar metacarpal arteries will anastomose with these palmar digital arteries or even on occasion with that distal medial palmar artery. This is important because should we get damage to our main supply of our medial palmar artery, we do have collateral circulation backing that up. Okay, so this image here, we see the medial palmar, so we're looking at the caudal surface here. We've ref cut and reflected the flexor tendons so that we can see that medial palmar giving off the lateral and the medial palmar digitals. Okay, as we follow those down the limb, just something to note that as we're coming down the metacarpus, we're going to have our medial palmar vein artery and nerve in that order going from dorsal to palmar. And also at the digit, we will also see that medial palmar digital vein artery nerve, V-A-N. The dorsal branch of the palmar digitals sometimes throws you off because it is more dorsal than the VAN, which is kind of watch for that. Also notice that that dorsal branch, there may be multiple. It may not just be one branch. Okay, let's look at the bovine here quickly. In the bovine, the main supply once again is going to be the median artery. We're going to have a radial artery coming off that. A branch of that radial is going to come around to the dorsal surface. We'll follow that in just a minute. Just as we saw before, we've got branches of the collateral ulnar. Here we also see the inner osseous joining that. And then we're going to have our branches of the radial 
coming together to form the deep arch. That deep arch once again giving off palmar metacarpal arteries. We're also going to see a more distal arch there. Okay, they're going to have a branch that's going to come up and join the median. And then from there distally, we'll have the palmar common digital artery 3. Notice that on the dorsal surface, the branch of the radial is going to continue as the dorsal metacarpal artery 3. We're going to see both a proximal and distal perforating branch, which if you look over back to the palmar view, we see those branches coming in to join both the proximal and distal arches. So we've got a lot of collateral circulation here. Okay, so coming from the dorsal metacarpal artery 3, distal to that perforating branch, we see the dorsal common digital artery 3. Now these in blue, you don't need to worry about identifying, but know that that dorsal common digital artery 3 is going to join with that palmar common digital artery 3 via what's referred to as the interdigital artery. From that interdigital artery, we're going to get the palmar axial digital artery 3 and 4. So these are important as the primary supply to the digit. It's important to remember when you do a digit amputation, as you will see if you look at the bovine skeletons that we have out, one of them shows that. When they do that amputation, you'll notice that they cut through the proximal phalanx at an angle. This is for two reasons. One is because branches from those axial digital arteries are going into that bone from that axial surface and so we want to preserve that blood supply to the bone. Also by cutting it at an angle it avoids having a stump there that will hang up on things. As I said you're responsible for the outline structures. Okay looking at the veins now very similar they're going to be very similar proximal to the Carpus. However, it's going to be the accessory cephalic vein, which is the major, the principal drainage. Okay, distally, it's coming from the dorsal common digital vein 3. Here we see the median vein coming down. And we've got a lot of branching going on, very similar with the arteries. But what's important is this palmar common digital vein 2 and the palmar common digital vein 4. So palmar common digital veins 2 and 4, dorsal common digital vein 3 are important. These are important because as I said when I talked about the distal nerves, so we do not do nerve blocks in the bovine and instead we put on a tourniquet and we inject anesthesia into the vein. And these are the sites that we would do that at. Alrighty, that's all I have for you on this one. Thank you.